Welcome to the Biobalance Health Test, episode number 437. How do mitochondria get sick? Biobalance Health Cast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. I grew up in the 60s when the term free the radicals was a much more positive <laughs> concept. Uh, and I didn't study science the way you studied science. Mm -hmm. So our definition of free radical was something different than yours. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the word has meaning when we talk about mitochondria uh, and what they are and how they work. So can we start with the scientific okay. definition of a free radical? What is that and why is it relevant, relative to the conversation? Let me back up for a second. The mitochondria are subcellular uh, organelles, little organs within an, within a cell that produce energy. They take sugar and and um, water and make energy out of it. Okay. So that's a nice process. It works great if you have great food, great water, very little pollution. But in this world, unfortunately we have substances that damage our mitochondria. And they come from... And, and the every, mitochondria are essential to our survival because they provide the energy at the cellular level. Right. They make that from the food that we eat, from the sunshine that we receive. Mm -hmm. So That's you have right. them, you gotta keep them healthy. You probably already, I mean, everybody knows that you take, once you eat and sugar, your, all your food's made into blood sugar. Right. And the blood sugar, has to get inside the cells to make energy, but they, that's where it stops. People don't talk about what happens next. Right. What happens next is it goes into the mitochondria within the cell and then makes energy. And the mitochondria are like little factories that work inside the cell mm -hmm. and produce an end product mm -hmm. that the cell then needs as, as gasoline in a car mm -hmm. to do the function that it's designed to do. So all these little cells are making energy. It's like everybody's got its own battery. Every right. little cell has its own battery and it's making energy, which then you feel as a human being, as keeping keeping the lights on keeping you thinking keeping you moving keeping you eating keep keeping all of the functions of your body working so what happens when life causes us to uh, experience free radicals it's the enemy free radicals are the enemy and, and probably you've heard this catchphrase too take this to, to um, neutralize your free radicals or do this do this diet yeah, to neutralize your free radicals yeah we get the message that free radicals are not a good thing Right. They're, they're like pirate ships that, that attack you mm -hmm. and take things from you that you need. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So, so, I, go to, so I go to see my mother-in-law, who's <laughs> considerably older and, and not in good health, and I ask her, you know, how are your mitochondria to today? I know she does. I'm being very nice. <laughs> so, how, how are your mitochondria today? She says, all the free radicals are getting them. <laughs> but that's... That's what happens. That's, that's the, the mega view. So when we're talking about free radicals, we're not talking about a political movement. No. We're, we're talking about little teeny tiny um, particles that are charged. They have a charge. Like you probably learned in science that if you have an, a positive and a negative charge, they come together if, you have, if you're using magnets. And uh, if you have two negative charges, they push apart. You may remember that with those little magnets that we used on yeah. the tables. This is a similar idea. This is a substance that has a charge and they're negative charges. So these negative charges are looking for something to hook up with. So it's looking for another electron. It wants to be not charged. So all these free radicals that get into our body are trying to lose their charge, lose their electron. So that's, they damage the mitochondria. When they get to the mitochondria, they damage the energy-making system that we have, and therefore we get sick. It kills cells. They throw cells. the system out of balance. Right, throws it out of balance. Because they steal electrons from healthy cells mm -hmm. to complete their circuit, mm -hmm. which is what they're designed to do. And right. the paradox of that is 
the healthy cell that loses the electron mm-hmm. to the to the free radical then becomes um, a free, its own free radical. Its own free radical. So, for example, so it's like dominoes falling over; they just get worse and worse and spread. Right. So unless you get rid of them, unless you get rid of them. But one of the one of the um, substances that the free radicals work on are uh, oxygen molecules. Oxygen molecules are two oxygens together. So two um, charged oxygens come together to make O2. That's what we breathe. So it's a non-charged artic- uh, um, excuse me, substance when we're breathing it. Free radical goes and steals the electron from one of them, divides them up. And so now they're charged. Right. That's what people call um, oxygen, like oxygen damage in your body. Is oxygen oxidative, usually is a oxidative good, stress. Is right. Oxidative what? stress. Thank you. Oxidative stress. So how can oxygen be bad? We 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 breathe it. Well, it's bad when the oxygen molecule is divided by free radicals, and then they are free radicals and they damage the cell. Would that be like pollutants in the air that yes. contaminate the oxygen? Well, yes, it would be like that, but but it basically pollutants aren't ju- pollutants are toxins. Right. They're not just dividing the oxygen. Okay. So this is something that happens within the cell. At a microcellular level. Right. So, yeah. you know, the body, the, the tissues, this, the organs, and then the cells, right. basically, that make them all up. So th- this is within that tiny little cell and that tiny little um, mitochondria. So, so here we have the enemy, free radicals, right. with, with an electron, it's trying to steal an electron. And then we have... Um, then we have oxidative stress, which is the outcome, and then we have damaged mitochondria, which is really bad for your health. The more you're, you damage your mitochondria, the less energy you make. That makes the cells not do their job. Like if they were supposed to um, be part of a muscle and be a muscle cell and contract, they can't contract as well. And if they were supposed to be giving you energy in your brain, they're not going to give you much energy and you're not going to be able to think. I mean, these are every single cell was meant to work properly without these free radicals invading. And, and free radicals over time will cause cancer and diabetes and all kinds of other health problems. So, so there's an accumulated effect. If, yes. if we're talking about individual cells, mm-hmm. if we break this all the way down to the single cell, but you were talking about a muscle that needs to flex. Mm-hmm. There are millions of cells. Millions in those and muscles. billions and billions. And so of there, cells. one or two or a dozen that get damaged or sickened mm-hmm. are not going to influence your ability to lift something. No, our bodies can tolerate that. A, a huge amount, mm-hmm. but eventually it gets overwhelmed, and then we right. are not strong enough to keep our balance, not strong enough to climb a flight of stairs mm-hmm. because and it of the damages. Sometimes that damages our DNA, and that makes. The, a cell's DNA is like its um, architectural plan. It tells it what to do. So if you have your DNA damaged and DNA becomes RNA that then becomes damaged. I, I'm sorry, it's complicated, but but we'll just call it DNA and we're saying both when I say that. That causes cells to become abnormal. So I want to avoid all the free radicals. <laughs> I don't want free radicals. Right. Let's lock them up. Well, what causes... So what ca- Causes the free radicals. Yeah. Where do so they come So you said from? air pollution. All right. That's one of them. Smoking's another. Cigarette smoking. You actually take that poison and put it in your lungs when you smoke. Right. You're just asking for it. Yeah. It's kind of like, shoot me. Just <laughs> just shoot me. I get, You know, I'm probably not going to die of this today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but someday but I will. But there's effect. Because it's little by little by little, you're damaging your whole body. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the risk you take. So there's another Alcohol, too much alcohol. A little alcohol is okay. A lot of alcohol is not. That damages your cells. It causes oxidative stress. And it damages your mitochondria. So all of, so I'm going to go through a list. All of these things, if we just avoided these things, most of them we can avoid, some we can't. We would be a lot healthier and we wouldn't need as many supplements and and different kinds of foods it. however and some and some we could avoid like toxins to- yeah certain toxins poisons, poisons but alcohol is a poison when you right. take it in your body it's a poison that's why alcohol gets digested before your food gets digested right it shuts down the the processing of everything else because the body to puts it the to the top and yeah. get the poison out so right. everything else collects and we learned that from our resident engineer who knew that yes yes yes, yes joe gave us that that we were asking 
is alcohol a sugar or a fat or what? And we were asking ourselves that because we didn't, really didn't know. I mean, that's not really part of my medical training. Yeah. Well, alcohol is a toxin. It's not any of the others. Now, it can be mixed with sugars and stuff, right. but it's not any of the others. It's just a toxin. Here, have have some uh, have cyanide. Some Here, drink some of this. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, blood sugar. Blood sugar, high, high blood, blood sugar. sugar. So that's one of the reasons we want to keep diabetes in control, where we don't just go, oh, yeah, you're Blood sugar is 350, great. Here, have that's an ice cream not, shake. That's <laughs> not acceptable. It's damaging your cells when yeah. your blood sugar is elevated. Okay. So that is, that's not good. Um, lots of polyunsaturated fats, so animal what is fats. A poly animal animal fat. fats, lard. Um, Oh, my grandmother used to cook with lard all the yeah, time. Yeah, well. If, if she didn't boil it, she fried it, it. She fried it in lard. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> no, I mean it. Is. I know. I mean, you were in the South. Yes. I mean, Arkansas and Missouri border each other. Missouri's part way in the South and part in the North, but I, yeah. but Arkansas is in the South. I mean, and they put, and lard was the fat they used. I remember my uh, my neighbor was from, I don't know where in the South, but from the South, and we go to her house. And, I mean, my, my friend's house, and her mother would have this big coffee can of bacon grease, and that's what she cooked with, and she just Absolutely. slap it on there. Keep it in the center of the stove, yeah. scoop it out when you need it. And never and never put it in the refrigerator. I mean, it just no. rotted, which makes it much more dangerous. A little rancid bacon fat is good for yeah. most things. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I had no <laughs> idea how bad that was. So, um, okay, radiation. Radiation is really what happens when we're out in the sun. Although we need the sun for our vitamin D, we don't need too much sun and we don't need enough sun to burn us. Yeah. So that's when it becomes damaging. So that's something that can damage your mitochondria. And that's something we don't think about. But infections, illnesses, we can't avoid those, viruses. They, they can damage our cells and our mitochondria as well. So um, if too, we, too little oxygen, too much oxygen, uh, in, right. an imbalance in the amount that you need. And then we talk about heavy metals. You know, people who are exposed to aluminum, they drink too many sodas out of a can, or they uh, they were exposed to aluminum or lead, or th those are heavy metals. When those when those uh, accumulate in the body, because heavy metals means you can't get rid of them in a normal fashion, they accumulate and they damage the mitochondria in the cells. So there's another term that you need to define for me, because I see it here on the list, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that I know how it fits. Mm -hmm. It's an antioxidant. So what is right. that? Right. So anti we talk about antioxidants is another catchphrase. Here, take this antioxidant. Here's some vitamin yeah. E. Oh, Here's some, some vitamin C. Right. Uh -huh. Have some A. Have some carotene. Those are all about, an, called antioxidants. But why are they called antioxidants? I mean, oxygen's good, right? Mm. It's not good if it is. it has a charge. If the oxygen, the O, has a charge and is a free radical, then you need something to, to wipe it up and get it out of the body. That's what antioxidants do. They they attach, they sacrifice themselves. So all these vitamins and, and supplements sacrifice themselves in your body to collect the free radicals and get them out of your body. So we talked about advertising and propaganda and stuff last week. Mm -hmm. but what pops into my head, because we're all exposed to advertising, we're, we're a market-driven economy. Mm -hmm. We are marketed all the time. Uh, there is an anti-acid product that they show like the imagined stomach yeah. with all these little sponges of anti-acid uh -huh. floating in it and then they reach out and grab some acid <laughs> and absorb it reach out right. and grabs well, and so then all the acid in your stomach gets absorbed by the anti-acid is uh -huh. that what an antioxidant does that's pretty much what it does it okay. sacrifices itself because it can be cleared it can get out of the body easier than um a charged oxygen it molecule. passes through the kidneys uh, and the bowels and it gets mm -hmm. excreted. Excreted, or through the skin. Sometimes it's sweat. skin, sweat. Your, your, your skin is your biggest organ and it does excrete lots of things with sweat or just... And it breathes. I mean, yeah. it, it, there's a lot of that oxygen transfer mm -hmm. that goes on. So, so those are the ways that we get rid of our toxins, get rid of our oxidants, and we eat antioxidants to actually help get rid of the bad oxygen. So there was an urban myth about the movie Goldfinger, when they painted the girl with gold, and they said, oh, she would die of suffocation. So when they painted her, they actually left a six inch square on her back, uh, or uh, on her stomach, that they didn't paint because she was laying face down. And mm -hmm. they said, well, the skin can breathe through that. And, and actually she didn't die. 
but no kidding. No, she, <laughs> that's an urban myth. No, you, you look it up. Right. Yeah. Right. I and mean, we've all heard it, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, you know, because many of us didn't know at that time the skin breathed in that way. Right. And they, the theory was, if you block the skin from breathing, you'll suffocate. But you won't. But you won't. No. So you, don't you worry don't, about that. Don't lose enough. <laughs> That is an urban myth. Yeah. But that's but it is important that, that all of our cells get oxygen in the right form, not in the free radical form. Right. So um, sometimes, believe it or not, too much exercise can cause free radicals. I, I believe that. I do too. But <laughs> I believe that because I, I choose yeah. not to do t- yeah. too excessive exercise. But we all know somebody who gets on the treadmill for two hours a day. That's excessive exercise. Yes. That I, I is, had a client once that wore out three Stairmasters. Well, my dad used to run, run on the treadmill for, I don't know how yeah. many hours a day. He wore out his knees. He made himself sick. He couldn't walk, and he wore out a treadmill every year. Yeah. I mean, it was Too much. excessive. So if you're obsessive compulsive, try not to do that with your exercise because it will cause you to have anti excuse me, it will cause you to have free radicals. And you'll have to counter so them. So you need some antioxidants, but an excessive consumption of antioxidants yeah, that's true. is also damaging. It's all mo- moderation. Moderation of everything. That's what Ben Franklin said. Moderation in all things, except moderation. Yeah, I know. Uh, he loves but, saying stuff so like that. So what are, <laughs> what are foods that contain antioxidants? If I want to eat them instead of taking supplements... What Here's my I eat? favorite. Okay. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. And, and in moderation, dark chocolate's a good thing. You don't want to overwhelm so yourself. So if my wife says, you can't eat that candy bar because it's got sugar and you got to monitor your sugar, I can say, actually, I'm taking in my dose of antioxidants. I would say, you can have a fourth of that candy bar. Oh, that would be enough? You think? That would be enough. Oh. That'd be enough, but not enough for you. To get a sugar high. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, but we like to make... In our house, we like to make salads that are really unusual salads. So on the salads, we put pecans, which is is an antioxidant, a food that okay. contains a lot of antioxidants. We put blueberries, another pecans food. as opposed to all nuts. Right, pecans spe- okay. especially okay is a good antioxidant. Uh, we put blueberries on it. We right. put artichokes on it. We do put like some cheese crumbles on it as well, and all kinds of vegetables, every color, like um, like. Peppers, that are yellow peppers, yellow, things. red, so green, a little bit of yeah. every color because right. that signifies the carotenes are yellows. It makes it so and much reds. prettier. Well, it's also an antioxidant. The carotenes, the beta, the um, beta carotenes, which are like vitamin A. So we always and we have kale. We have you know any any berry and any nut that we have in the house goes on there. So that's our antioxidant fix for the day. Basically, we get it all in one in one session. And then we eat something else like lamb or something. But but that so key lime pie. Art, strawberries, artichokes, goji berries. Those are interesting. I'm not sure if I like them or not. I haven't decided. Uh, raspberries, kale, um, coffee. My coffee. favorite that, daily yes. coffee. I get my antioxidants in my coffee every yeah. day. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't have to be caffeinated, but coffee. Um, cranberries, green tea. And here's one for the Italians. Garlic. Garlic. <laughs> garlic on everything. It's my favorite. I mean, my mother yeah. used to say, you should have garlic in everything. You know, she, well, she and there's the, a product called garlic <laughs> that's you know, marketed as an antioxidant. You really? take this to make you healthy. Oh, yeah. But it also gives you a really bad breath, so you might as well eat it. The, the, the garlic. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, kind of burp it up. Huh. Okay. So grape skins, popcorn. Popcorn. Yogurt and broccoli. I'd probably say cauliflower, too. So some of these are, are sort of innately attractive to me. Others, not so much so. Right. So they all have different antioxidants in them. Mm-hmm. I mean, they almost go by color. I would say the greens kind of go together and the yellows and the reds. And, you know, you can almost do it by color, the blues. Mm-hmm. So have a little bit of every color, and you should be able to get most of the antioxidants you need. So having said that, what are the antioxidants that you need? I mean, just what is it in these foods... Right, that's good. That heals your mitochondria and counteracts the uh, free radicals. Well, vitamin E, which I will tell you, I don't want anyone to take more than 800 MIUs a day. 800 is the max. What's an MIU? MI, milli international unit. So that's because vitamin E, A, 
and D can collect in your system. So you don't want to overdo it. Okay? okay. So E, 800 is the max. Vitamin D, generally 5,000 is the max unless you're really deficient by blood test. Uh, vitamin A, 25,000 milli international units is enough. That's the carotene. That's the oranges and, and the uh, yellows. It's carrots and, and peppers and other fruits of that color. Vitamin C is water soluble. You can, you can pretty much have as much vitamin C as you want because it's going to go out your kidneys if you have too much. Okay. And most of the other vitamins that you consider vitamins do that. Now, omega-3s are antioxidants. So is DHA. It's, it's one of the uh, fatty acids. Alpha-lipoic acid, we talked about that. L-carnitine, the part that's in meat. Coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q is really um, important for people who ha take uh, statins because it uses up your co co -Q co -Q uh, coenzyme Q. So you need to take more if you're taking a statin. If you're on a statin for your blood pressure? No, statin for your um Cholesterol. For your cholesterol. For your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then selenium is a, a mineral and is a trace mineral, but you should take that. Resveratrol, that's in wine and, and grape skin, so you can you can get it with food or you can take it orally. Um, iodine, folate, glutamine, and something called NAC. Those are all the supplements. But I want to talk about the last one, sulfur, for a minute. Okay. And we didn't talk about this, but that's right. I'm, there was, I'm open to learning. There was an article um, online that was based on a medical medical study, believe it or not, that said that <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Smelling someone's farts gives you the sulfa you need to heal your mitochondria. I am not kidding. That was in my research last night when I was writing this up. So they were saying that couples should you know, enjoy you know that, that. I know your husband. I, yes. And I know he's only working. So to I am the so healthy. <laughs> he's famous. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but yeah. He's, uh, so I mean, my mitochondria are smiling. <laughs> but but <laughs> Thank there's, goodness. but that's the sulfa that you take in through your lungs helps your mitochondria, believe it or not. And that's considered a benefit. I had to just add that, and I didn't want to tell you ahead of time. I, yes, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I figured That's you more, would probably have... TMI, TMI, yes. <laughs> so we talked about how the, the um, free radicals are removed with the antioxidants. Basically, they're combined and out. So that's... And until I really researched this, mm -hmm. I guess I just thought of antioxidants like supplements. Oh, yeah, you take this and it makes you better. I didn't really think about how it worked. Right. And it's really interesting and important to know how it works. So I don't pay a lot of attention anymore to ads. I try to avoid them as much as possible. But part of the reason that we had this conversation last week and this week is that advertisers use these terminologies without really explaining what they are. Mm -hmm. And so you absorb the sales pitch. You absorb the mm -hmm. message, like the CoQ10 ads. CoQ10. Without knowing what CoQ... Good. Yeah. And antioxidants, good. Yeah. Oxidative stress, bad. I right. mean, basically, that's kind of how we divide it up in our brain. And that's how it's sold. But it's sold to us, and we respond to it without ever really knowing what it is or understanding what it is, mm -hmm. which is why we had this conversation these last two weeks on this topic. We hope that you find it useful, and it will make you think about what you eat and how you live in different ways, more positive ways. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.